Why would I want to pay off money to the bank when the money is hardly almost free? Hey, what's up you guys? Lucas here from ExcelWealth.com. Now, in today's video, I want to talk to you about why you should not be paying off your mortgage. At least, don't pay off any necessary extra. In today's video, I'm going to show you through an example from my own experience compared to one of my colleagues. And we've been working together for many, many years. So I can actually just show you how we did it throughout the years. The reason why you should absolutely not be paying off your mortgage anymore is because you can use that money far better. So I got to change the name of the colleague slightly because otherwise those who know me and my colleague, it's not kind of okay, okay? So my colleague's name, his name is Robin. And I've been working with Robin for, I think, somewhere between 10 and 11 years right now. So that's quite a long while right now. And the thing is, we kind of started out at the same place and he bought a home worth of 300,000, which is totally fine for a normal home. And I will show his home somewhere here on the screen as well. So that's his home. He, you know, the value of the home is about 300,000. His mortgage, his monthly mortgage is about 1K mortgage. And this is monthly payment, okay? Monthly, okay? So this is a monthly payment. Now, I don't know about your country, but in my country here in the Netherlands, the moment you get a mortgage, it's most likely somewhere like 30 years. 30 years, that would mean it's about 360 months, okay? 360 months, that's the amount of time you get to pay off your mortgage. And then you can kind of pay off 1K per month, and that goes on 300, so that means you, you do own the bank a certain amount of interest rate that goes over a year, and you know, but that doesn't really matter. We're not talking about the interest rates over there. Now, and the interesting part is in this calculation, so my, my colleague Robin, um, just like the average Dutch person, you gotta see like this, in our country, there are, so about 60% about the people who live in the Netherlands can about save 10K per year. That's about the savings, so this is savings. So with these numbers, what he would do in his case, since he, so Robin and his wife both were working, they could absolutely save up 10,000 euros per year. And the interesting part was they did save some, you know, some, some extra money as well. I think they had somewhere between five and seven K per year extra savings. So on top of the average of the Netherlands, you know, the Dutch people, they had an additional five to seven K, but they would spend that on their annual holidays, they would spend that on cars, they would spend that on things that they would necessarily need, you know, to buy once in a while. But they would save up 10,000 euros per month. The interesting part was in this case, he would use this 10,000 to pay off his mortgage, you know, as an early repayment. So instead of having uh, to pay 30 years, what he would do, he would use every year, he would use this 10K this 10k and he would put that into the bank saying like you know what i'm gonna pay off my mortgage even faster and by doing so like every year so so his mortgage amount would still be the same so in the beginning you're paying a lot of interest compared to paying off the principal that's the idea but the moment you tend to pay off your mortgage as well because you're allowed to pay off your mortgage up to 10 percent Meaning that if you have 300K, you have a loan of 300K from the bank to buy your house, you, are, you, you would be allowed to pay off up to 30K per year. So without any fees or without any fines. So that would be very nice. But you know, most people in the Netherlands can't save up to 30K per year. So in his case, he would just pay off 10,000 euros per year. Extra, additionally, on top of the standard 1K per month. So all of a sudden, he would reduce his time to pay off his mortgage, would be reduced. Every time 
he would pay 10K, it would be reduced with a few months. The interesting part was he did a calculation with him and his wife. He said, you know what? If I keep on paying 10K per month, uh, sorry, if I keep on paying 10K per year, additionally, to pay off my mortgage early, it wouldn't take me 360 months. It would take me 181 months, which is 15 years and one month, which is a great deal of time. You got to see it like that. So instead of being stuck to his mortgage for 30 years, he would say, Lucas, I'm doing a great thing because this is how we calculated our money. Instead of paying 30 years over the whole mortgage to take, you know, to pay off the mortgage, we would only take 181 months, which sounds like a great deal. And he said, Lucas, you know what I do it? You know how I do this? Because I'm paying off my mortgage like this, after 15 years, I already own the property. It's completely mine. I don't need to pay the bank anything anymore. So this looked like a great idea. Now we're gonna go to my situation. So what did I do? I kind of bought, so in the same time, me and my wife, we also bought our own home. You'll see my home and I'll show you my home as well, okay? So in my case, so my name is Lucas, of course. So in my case, I had the same mortgage, kind of like Robin. My home is also 300,000. I live in a different city, but that's totally fine. So my mortgage is also about 300. I loan 300,000 from the bank. My monthly mortgage is 1K. So that's kind of similar as well. So it's also 1,000 per month. And again, in, in his case as well, I would take 30 years to pay off. So I would take 30 years to pay off this full mortgage. And same to him as well. I would, I would be able to save up 10K of savings per year. Sorry for writing this. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a bit hard to write. Okay, so I would have the same numbers as he did, but the difference is over here. Now, so my colleague Robin, he would spend his 10K savings into paying off his mortgage earlier, making it the time, making the time shorter in the end. Now, in my case, what I did in this case is I used this 10K to invest. And I invested my month my money monthly using my own strategy. So this strategy that I created is not something completely new. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just using all the elements of great other coaches that I've learned from. And I created an investing strategy that would benefit me in the end. Now, you gotta see it like this. So instead of what he did is investing his 10K per year by paying off the mortgage, earlier, what I did is I invested my money. So I invested my money monthly. So I would have somewhere around 800 euros that I would invest monthly. So somewhat around 800. So in the end, it would be around somewhat around 10K. Now the interesting part is this, using my own strategy, and I'm not gonna go into my own strategy, using my own strategy, I could get somewhere between eight to 12% of return on investment, okay? Now we're not talking about the numbers, but instead, so what, what my colleague Robin did, is he just put the money in the bank account. Here is 10K. Now I owe you less. That's the only thing what my colleague did towards the bank. Now, in my case, I just kept on paying the 1K because, you know, I would be able to save up 10,000 euros per year anyway. So what I did is this. I invested the 10K. At the end of the year, this 10K would be around 11K. You know, if we take the average of 10% ROI using using the investment strategy that I did. Now, I'm not talking about the investment strategy today. I'm talking about why you should absolutely not pay off your mortgage any extra. The second year, so this is year one, this is year two. In year two, this would already, of course, be um, 10,000, this original 10,000, 
plus 11,000 from previous years and plus the 10% ROI. Okay, not going to go into the details of numbers. You can, of course, do this yourself. And in year three, of course, again, you just add up this somewhere between 2200 plus the original 10K plus the 10% ROI. After three years, I would have something around 33,000 euros. Okay, having 33,000, and I hope that the camera can still see this. So after three years, I would have 33,000. In this case, Robin would, after three years, have paid off 30,000. Now, because I invested my own money, I have slightly more. Okay, and that's the interesting part. Now, this is not exactly 33 because it's adding up 10% on top of what you have invested it in. Okay, so this might be slightly more. The interesting part is this. Now, using the 33,000 that I invested it together, all of a sudden, what I could do is I could buy real estate. So in my case, I bought, I'll show you somewhere over here. <laughs> I'll show you somewhere in the video. I bought this property. This was one of my first properties that I bought. And I bought this property. It wasn't the most finest looking property, but I bought it for a very cheap deal. I bought it for a very great and cheap deal. I fixed it up slightly. And all of a sudden, I would have a property that I could rent out. All of a sudden, so this property that I had, so the first property that I bought using this money, is this property would generate me somewhere around 750 euros per month just for your calculations now the mortgage so the mortgage on this property so by taking a mortgage on a property which is 100k so you take a loan on 100k okay so you got to put in 30,000 euros to be able to get a loan of 70,000 okay so you got to really understand like this. So the moment you use your 30,000 euros to invest in a property, the bank would give you 70,000 euros, okay, 70K. That's what the bank gives you. It says like, you know what, here's 70K, now you can buy your first real estate property. Using that money, all of a sudden, I have an income by having a tenant in the home. I have an income of 750 euros per month, which is a great deal. But hey, I still have to pay off, I still have to pay off the mortgage on the 70,000, okay? And let's pretend that in this case, I did not fix it up, I did not reappraise it, I did not get any more money, I just left it as it be, and 70, 50, eh, 750 euros is the amount that I got every month. Now I have to pay off the mortgage of this, and the mortgage is 300 euros per month. Okay, so I'm using red because red is a reduction. So. With that, this is just the mortgage. Mortgage, 300 bucks. 50 euros is insurance because you own the property. You have to, you have to insure the property because if something happens, you as owner are responsible for that, okay? And then of course, and then of course there is a risk. And I always say, you know, let's invest in risk because you don't know what happens. Uh, a certain door could fall out <laughs> or, a certain, uh, you know, the electricity could fall out. Anything that happens to the property that the tenant can't do anything about, that is your job as a owner of the property to fix it up. And if you leave about 100 bucks per month there to be able to fix up anything, even if climate system in the building drops, which is about 800 bucks to repair, hey, because you took a risk money, you got an emergency fund in that pot for your property. That's the way how you can manage your risk as well. Using this together, there is like a deduction of 450 euros per month on that property. Meaning, from the original 750 euros that you get from your tenant, there is still 300 euros net income per month. What you can get and put in your pocket right away. And this is the difference. This is the difference compared to Robin because all of a sudden, because I get 300 euros per month net income from my property per year, this is 3,600 annually. All of a sudden, 
I would be saving 10,000 euros. So you gotta see it like this. I'll go to this side. So my savings all of a sudden was 10,000 euros, just like Robin, what Robin had over here. But because I owned a property that would pay off itself and I would even have money left. You gotta really, you gotta really see it like this. Even after risk management of a hundred bucks per month, I would have 300 bucks per month. By the end of the year, I would be able to save up 10,000 plus 3.6K. And that after three years, I bought my first property. Having money, having money left all of a sudden. And if I do that again, after another three years, I would invest 13.6 thousand euros per year to be able to invest, he would only be paying off 10K per year. And after 15 years, and this is the cool part, after 15 years, he only paid off 300,000. Okay, so after 15 years, Robin would have paid off 300,000. But he would still have to pay the insurance of his own home. He would still have to pay the electricity of his home. I would pay the same thing. So it's not completely living for free in his home. He would still have his monthly expenses, but all of a sudden he would have his 10K left. And then what most Dutch people tend to do is they would say, you know what, I'm gonna work less. Instead of working full time, I'm gonna work two or three days a week. All of a sudden you're gonna work less. In my case, I was just generating money. Now, because I was able to get this 3,600 euros per year and my 10K over here, I would save up a lot faster because I'm still investing. Remember that I'm investing 8 to 12% annually. Remember 8 to 12% annually? Because you have 13.6K per year, saving up to the 30 next 30K would only last two and a half years instead of three years. So after two and a half years, I have another property. After two and a half years, I got this property over here as well. I'll show you some pictures in the video. And then again, of course, somewhere around the same number, I would get another 3,600 euros from that property, making 10K plus 3.6K point another 3.6K. And this is only after five and a half years. Because hey, the first three years, I was saving up for this one. The next two and a half years, I was saving up for the next one. And this is how a snowball effect can start rolling because you go faster and faster and faster. And now currently, it takes about two or three months time to be able to buy the next property. This is how fast my money has been accumulating. So instead of saving up 10K per year, I'm saving about 10K saving. I'm not talking about the expenses. The net saving that I have is around 10K per month. And all of a sudden, this goes a lot faster. And this is how and why you should not spend your money on paying off your mortgage. So Robin has been living in his home for eight years and he's only halfway. I, on the other end, if I wanted to, I could pay off the mortgage right away. But then again, why would I spend, why would I pay, why would I pay off my mortgage, the money that I get from the bank for almost free, <laughs> practically, it's practically free. I'm paying off that mortgage. Why would I do that? It's free money that I get from the bank. Why would I want to pay off money to the bank when the money is hardly almost free and I can use that to generate more income. And this is why I never pay off my mortgage any extra. I'm paying off the necessary things. I'm paying off the 1K, okay? It's not that I'm not paying off. It's not that I'm not paying off anything. I'm still paying off my mortgage, but I'm not paying any additional mortgage. And this is why, because you can grow your money like a snowball. Hey, thank you very much for watching today's video. Of course, if you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button because that's what YouTube really likes. But don't hit it too often because, you know, if you hit it again, it'll just turn gray again. But we want to have it blue. So be sure to hit it an uneven times 
If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel because every time a new video is released, you can be one of the first ones to watch it as well. If you haven't hit that bell icon yet, be sure to hit that bell icon as well because every time a new video is released or published, you will be notified a new video is out. I thank you very much and I'll see you on the next video. Happy investing. Bye-bye.